What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to the channel. And we have a big discussion we had today, folks, because we all know the Mets are looking to add not just another starter, but a bona fide middle of the rotation starter once the lockout is lifted. They did exactly that pre lockout, trying to land not just Max Scherzer, but Kevin Gosman too, simultaneously. And out of the many free agent and trade targets that we discuss as fits for the Mets already on the channel, there's one player in particular that stands out, not just based on his uncertain future, but the Mets even have a realistic shot of going after him. That, of course, being a longtime great Southpaw playing Kershaw. So that's all I'll be breaking down in today's video. Everything that there is to know about Clayton Kershaw and his game, his current connection, if at all, with the New York Mets, the likelihood, unlikelihood of him actually landing in Queens, and so much more. So as always, folks, make sure you stay all the way till the end video. Follow the details and all my thoughts on Clayton Kershaw and the likelihood or unlikelihood, again, of him landing with the Mets. And again, folks, if you find yourself enjoying this kind of Mets content and you want to see more great Mets content like this, don't hesitate from smashing that like and subscribe on sharing this video with your friends, put on the notification bell, all those great things. Thank you all so much for the continued support, folks. Now let's jump right into today's video. All right, folks, so it seems like we're all under the same understanding. We know the Mets are going to add another starter, at least one more. They want to land a big one because to see pre-lockout from them to jump from a Steven Matz level that, yes, they actually had interest in Steven Matz. Can't even remember that, right? To jump all the way to a Kevin Gosman type along with Max Scherzer at the same time. That's crazy in itself. It tells you that they have the big bucks to spend. We know that by now. Richest team in baseball, but also have the ability to address a hole, which is a rotation. Because let's face it, it's all uncertainties right now. Yes, you have the two-end monster, the two best pitchers in baseball and DeGrom and Scherzer. Outside of that, you don't know what you have and health is a big uncertainty. So they want to add stability and want to add another big arm in the middle of that rotation. And assumably, we'll probably want a Southpaw as well. Not that they need it to be a Southpaw, but it makes sense because they don't have a lefty in that rotation right now. And yes, David Pearson is available, but he's a guy that's on the outside looking in to actually be in this rotation. If he's in that rotation to start the season, odds are that's probably not a good thing. And that's not a slight of David Pearson. That just given the depth that the Mets need to have success to hopefully go for a championship in 2022 and beyond and now we bring in Clayton Kershaw who's the biggest wild card of them all he is that free agent that truly there is no certainties as to what his future is going to be and you have to wonder why did the Dodgers not throw a qualifying offer his way to just make him a free agent instead well apparently the reports indicate that the Dodgers were really doing it out of respect for Kershaw and his family he wanted extended time to weigh his future so they didn't throw something like that at him because he would then deny it on the one-year deal and then whatever team would try to sign him would have to cop up a draft pick and doing so and actually that isn't something that the Dodgers are trying to do to Kershaw so they gave him that respect but there's a lot of uncertainties with him not just on his future where he'll potentially sign but his health mainly and that's another thing that all opposing teams are weighing when looking at him and his marker right now because Kershaw dealt with injuries this past year in 2021 not just with his elbow but his forearm missed some significant time in doing so had an injection a plasma injection and looks to be ready to go without surgery needed for the upcoming season at least for spring training to start it doesn't look like we're gonna have spring training on time unfortunately Unfortunately, right but no less Kershaw we know he's hopefully going to be healthy but to what extent that's a big question mark here but why does he make sense for the Mets here well again the Mets trying to address a rotation if you're checking off some boxes to land another bona fide starter that is Kershaw and also landing someone that could be a southpaw that's another checking off the box and then when we look at one healthy Clayton Kershaw we all know has been one of the most dominant figures in baseball for a decade plus he isn't at that prime level anymore but he's still getting the job done one healthy without question coming off of his 14th MLB season all with the LA Dodgers put up some really respectable numbers when he could stay on the mound and just over 120 innings pitch, 22 starts, had himself a three and a half year rate, 144 strikeouts, working with that deadly multi pitch arsenal with the slider, the four seam fastball, the curveball, and the changeup. And especially that slider had an opponent by an average 2021 at 0.198. And looking at the curveball, which is oh so deadly, an opponent by an average of 0.172. And when looking at his career, what else can you say about Kershaw at this point? He has himself a career two. 2.49 year ray and just under 2500 innings just under 400 games actually right around 30 away another full season from gain of 400 games game started just under 2700 career strikeouts looking like an absolute beast with not just being a one not a two but a three time Cy Young award winner also being an NL MVP back in 2014 when he won the Cy Young as well Kershaw has been gaining done year in and year out one of the most consistent starters in all of baseball as long as he's healthy as long as he is of course on the mound so yes we all have a pretty 
pretty good understanding of Clayton Kershaw and how good he has been in his career by now. But the question is, does he make sense for the Mets? Well, when you look for the Mets and what they've done this offseason, they've been emphasizing the short term in this win now stage under Steve Cohen. That's what they've done. They haven't won past a four year deal. That was, of course, Sterling Marte, the longest. But look at Max Scherzer, that deal. High AAV, record breaking deal over three years when they opt out after the first two years. Again, I don't see Scherzer opting out of that deal. Let's be honest here. But Kershaw, similar fate. The Mets could throw him a huge bag over, say, two, three years. High AAV for someone who's at the age of 33 already. And that way, when he would come in this rotation, he wouldn't have nearly as much pressure on his shoulders as he would as he has had in previous years as being the number one ace for the Dodgers back in his prime, at least until the Walker Buellers really came in their own and some others. But when you look at the Mets right now, you have DeGrom at your number one. You'd have Scherzer and you'd have Kershaw. What a three-headed monster that would be. Not just potentially one of the best in baseball, but potentially one of the best in MLB's history. That's how much potential there is there. But with saying that, the Mets are also a team that's trying to eliminate these uncertainties, these what-ifs, these injuries. When you look at the Mets rotation right now, even with Kershaw, pardon me, not Kershaw, DeGrom, and Scherzer to a certain extent, we don't know exactly how healthy they're going to be in 2022 and beyond. For guys that are now in their mid to late 30s, do the Mets want to really try to bet on another guy that's a huge wild card health-wise? I don't think that they want to, but they're definitely going to weigh their options come for agency here because Kershaw is someone where if he stays healthy, there's no denying how much of an impact he will have for you and your rotation to really take you over the top and hopefully win a championship in the near future. But the downside is this is someone that, again, you don't know exactly how healthy you're getting him. And that's something that the Mets are going to be awfully cautious with how they evaluate players this offseason, not just in free agency, but the trade market alike. So how much interest would someone like Clayton Kershaw potentially have in coming to the Mets? Yes, his buddy Max Scherzer, who he was teammates with down the stretch in 2021, did sign with the Mets on that record-breaking deal and really killed the narrative that, oh, Scherzer won come the Mets even though yes he became the highest player in baseball and doing so but you also have to look at Kershaw is a very different situation than Scherzer mainly because of location Kershaw is a Dallas native has all of his family out west in either California or of course in the Texas area and he's someone where if he's going to go anywhere, it makes a lot of sense that he's probably going to go to the Texas Rangers because that's a team that's fully willing to bring Kershaw on board for a team that made those big free agency signings and Marcus Simeon and also and others alike and Corey Seager, his teammate. He has connections as well, that being in Kershaw with the coach for the Rangers. So there's a lot of reasons as to why Kershaw really feels like the best fit for the Texas Rangers, even a team that isn't in a win now stage. If he really wants to ride out his career in the sunset around his family, then that's probably the place to be. But if Kershaw is going all in in a win now stage and wants to get an absolute bag, probably something that he won't be able to get in a couple years on his final contract, if it say wouldn't be now, then the Mets may very well be that destination. It's that Steve Cohen money. It's that ability to come into a three-headed monster of a rotation with less stress on his shoulders than maybe he would be where other places, especially if you went to the Rangers. Let's be honest. He would be that number one guy, that go-to guy always. And yes, I know that they're probably not making playoffs anytime soon, but still, knowing that he could come to the Mets, be the highest paid pitcher, one of them in baseball, alongside Scherzer, alongside Grom and go for a championship if that is enticing enough for him if he wants to win now still with a Dodgers team that always known as winning his entire career after winning a World Series in the short 2020 campaign now's the time to do it and that's where the Mets make perfect sense should he actually have interest in coming here those are the reasons for it but again if you want to stay home if you want to ride down the sunset I do think either going back to the Dodgers or the Texas Rangers is a more feasible option probably the more realistic option but win now definitely the Mets based on the money that they can throw at him better than any other club in baseball and the Mets have proven they're determined to land a player. They're going to do everything humanly possible to make sure that they land them. So Mets fans, let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about Clayton Kershaw potentially coming to the Mets? Do you think that's likely, unlikely? What do you think are the biggest hurdles in actually landing someone like Kershaw for the Mets' sake and maybe vice versa and Kershaw even coming to the Mets? How likely is it from his viewpoint and so much more? So as always, folks, make sure to let me know that. And again, if you found yourself enjoying this kind of Mets content and you want to see more great Mets content like this, don't hesitate from smashing that like and subscribe on. Sharing this video with your friends, on the notification bell all those great things thank you all so much for the continued support folks more great content here on wardy nym always and i'll talk to you soon let's go mets baby